So what are some of the common obstacles you've seen in sales leaders holding their team accountable? Because we all know we're supposed to do it. You can write 5,000 books on it, and yet it is an area that still falls short. So what's your philosophy there and why that's still happening? To me, the main obstacle is fear, a fear of damaging the relationship. Sales leaders worry that if they hold their reps accountable, it might create tension, it might create resentment, it may impact team morale. Another obstacle, as we talked about in a previous podcast, is having clear expectations. If you want to hold people accountable, you really need to be clear on what they're expected to do. So when I coach sales managers, accountability is a big component in my coaching models. It's what I call closing the accountability loop. And what it really means is if someone's committed to doing something, my whole approach is empowering sales reps to make their own plans as opposed to the manager telling them what to do. If you want to create a culture of accountability, it's about open communication and trust. So being clear on what the goals are, making them measurable is a first step in terms of what we train and teach on. So everyone knows what's expected. And then really the key is you don't want to be a micromanager, but you want to have periodic opportunities, regular check-ins where you hold people accountable and they provide feedback on how they're doing. And part of the thing is sometimes we see accountability as being punitive. I used to have a coach that I paid lots of money for. And every time before I had a conversation with them, I would check what I committed to doing. So I would have an answer why maybe I didn't do it or an excuse ready to go, but at least I knew what I was accountable to do. But if you don't have a good coach, then they don't hold you accountable. So you talk about things. So what does anything mean if there's no accountability to following through? By framing accountability as a path to really becoming better, I'm just keeping you on track. I'm here to help you. I think we're going to embrace people to open up and really get rid of some of that fear of worried about damaging the relationship. A lot of times when I've talked to salespeople and some will say, well, there's no accountability in this organization. And they feel that they're delivering, but others aren't. So if you're not holding people accountable, it actually is a downward spiral of people feeling that, well, I guess whatever they tell me is not important because they're not going to follow up. It's so essential as a coach, as a leader, that you're holding your people accountable. And I think that the biggest thing that I try to teach people is it's not punitive. Accountability is not beating someone on the head. It's like, how's it going with this? How is this proceeding? What have you learned? There's some very simple ways to ask the questions that just hold people accountable to do what they said they're going to do. And when you've got an organization, maybe a sales leader or a salesperson that views this as punitive, this is where it's up to the sales leader to reframe that conversation. In reframing, um, if you almost think of like a PowerPoint deck, you're looking at this particular screen and you need to change the picture on it. So one of the things I always encourage managers to do is to put their teacher hat on. You are not only a coach, but there are times you literally have to teach. And one of the concepts to teach, I think it's David... Osberger, he coined the term carefrontation. And the meaning behind that is I care enough about you to confront some blind spots, some areas of improvement. And you literally need to teach that concept to your team that caring is sharing. Because I know in my own life that when I care about an individual, I'll do the pre-call playing, the prep but I only share because I care. So if your team has that reframe in their head and you remind them of it when you're sitting down, maybe to do have that more difficult coaching conversation, they'll receive the course correction much better. And the other thing is everybody worries about micromanagement. But as you said, if you set up expectations, accountability, metrics, what have you, the teaching moment is also this. What gets measured improves. Again, not a new statement. But why is everybody walking around with watches that record their heartbeat and number of steps they walk? Because they know I got to get 10,000 steps in today. So we're all doing it. So don't get so wigged out when your manager is measuring metrics and following up on metrics. What gets measured improves. I've got a friend that does the Ironman and he's done four of them. He's 67. And guess what? He's measuring things, how many miles he bikes, swims, and runs. So common sense is if you want to improve, you measure.